If, like me, you were born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s, and you're a teenager in the 90s, you've probably heard of the Amiga 500. It was then superseded by the Amiga 500 Plus, which is the model here. Now, looking at it this way, these models look exactly the same on the outside. But what are the practical differences between an Amiga 500 and an Amiga 500 Plus? Let's find out. So what are the actual practical differences between an Amiga 500 and an Amiga 500 Plus? I've set up a series of tests. We're going to test one very, very popular game and we're going to test one cover disc, which I know is working. Let's see if there's a speed difference between the two and also if there's any issues with loading and things like that. There used to be an issue between games loading on the Kickstart 1 ROM and the Kickstart 2. So if you, if you had a Kickstart 1.3 or even 1.2, those games wouldn't necessarily load in the Kickstart 2 ROM and, and vice versa as well. So let's see if that's one of the differences. I've also realized there's massive yellowing differences between these two machines. So this is the 500, the 500 plus. If you know a good way of getting yellowing off of a, uh, an Amiga 500, please let me know in the comments below. Let's go. Okay, so first up is the Amiga 500. Now, as you can see, this has got the uh, a red power light here. These differed from machine to machine, to be honest. I think to be honest, when they uh, when they were making, they were just making them up with uh, whatever parts they had in the uh, laying around the factory. So, the popular game I'm going to be using is the one and only Lemmings. Uh, now, this is a this machine came with my uh, Commodore promotion pack. So this actually came with the Cartoon Classics pack that I had. And so let's see. So I'm going to put this in here. The minute I push it in, I'm going to start the timer and just see how long it takes to load. A lot of clicking away. Okay, so we've got the psychosis screen. And it's going into my DMI design or into the DMA design. This, this Amiga is a complete stock Amiga. It hasn't got any uh, additional memory, hasn't got anything. This is exactly just a 500 as they came off of the, um, off of the factory floor. I used to love the sound of these disc drives. Real crunching sounds, but. Okay, so the time is still running. I'm gonna do it until we actually can get into the gameplay to see if, um, see how long that takes. So let's go just for the one player. And until we actually, um... Ooh, that was a bit funny. Okay, yeah. Press mouse button to continue. Okay. Okay, so that's one minute twenty-two seconds. One minute twenty-two point zero nine seconds. That's a pretty long time actually from, uh, from start to finish. I don't, it never really sort of felt that long. Right, time to unplug and get the 500 plus in. Okay, so we have the 500 plus plugged in with the disc ready to go. As you can see here, we're gonna go back to Lemmings, exactly the same disc. Uh, one thing interesting I want to say actually about the uh, the output that I've got here. So rather than using the modulator, the TV modulator for the back of this, um, out of the back of the Amiga, I'm actually using a um, a output with an audio output through to a SCART cable, and it was from uh, Ami64.com. So I just want to thank them for uh, for providing that, and that service was absolutely brilliant when I bought it from them. Okay, here we go. Lemmings into the 500 plus. Start the timer. Obviously there was a 2.0 uh, 2 ROM screen there. And so we're gonna go all the way through from here. You notice it's actually got a green power light on this uh, on this drive as well. Psygnosis so screen's loaded. DMA design. 
one thing I do notice actually is that the hard drive is a lot less uh, crunchy on this 500 plus than it was on the 500 whether that's just something because the drives aged over time and this one's been kept in a better condition I'm not really sure so it's the uh, waiting screen the black screen here okay so we're straight through there one player obviously there's going to be a difference in here between these two because I'm just it took me a little bit longer maybe to click that time and then till we hear the let's go Okay, so 119.23 that time. Um, obviously a visual difference uh, of a, a couple of seconds, but realistically I'm not sure whether that was down to me clicking or taking the delay and clicking that mouse. Okay, so for this demo, we're gonna be uh, testing the 100% Amiga, uh, which was disc A, and it was presented with the issue 44 of the uh, magazine. It's got Fire and Ice on it, it's got The Humans, and it's got three complete games, which is Yelp, which was a superb Amidar clone, uh, Microbes, which is a Tempest style shoot 'em up, and Asteroids, clone of the all-time classic. This is the 500 plus, let's give this a go. What I'm looking for here is A, if they practically load, uh, and B, if, uh, that's about it really, if <laughs> it's playable. Okay, let's have a look. So let's give humans a go first. I'm not really so fussed about the sort of load time on these ones really. It's just looking at the, um, if they load okay. Because some machines, just because of the differences between those machines really. So far so good. And a very nice um, screen. Mirage presents that slightly off center that presents as well, and that's annoying. <laughs> Let me skip this. Okay, no skipping. I don't remember this game. Humans, anyone remember humans? They like little hedgehogs. The humans. Can you not actually do anything? Keyboard's not working. I guess we just gotta watch this demo of them beating each other up with a rock I think he's killed him no nope. is this a playable demo is he going to go and get a gun now <laughs> oh no he's going to throw a big rock off of the mountain top onto him ok this is boring now He's proud of himself. Oh. This doesn't look as if it's doing anything. Oh yeah, here we go. Level one. It's a bit of a dull intro that, wasn't it? Right, so this is me. So 
So what do we do here? So we're going to push up and do that. I don't really understand what else to do. Keyboard. Ah, you can swap them that way. Ah, oh, that's clever. Okay. Right, let's swap it to this dude. Swap it to this dude. And this one, do they all get like, a bit wobbly? Oh no, maybe not. No, I like this, this is clever, this is good. You get the idea. I don't know what this game is, but it's loading okay. Okay. Right, let's go for Fire and Ice. I still like this game. Okay. It's an exclusive playable demo. Nice, here we go. We're on the moat. Isn't that like a... Oh yeah, I forgot. It's amazing how quickly these things come back to you. See, this is where the so F4 was uh, something that needed one meg only. That's not going to load on my 500. All right, go to the next level, play the game. Let's just play the game. We're not fussed about the rules. Easy. Uh, okay. So you have to paint the little squares by those things. I like the little Amiga balls.
Ah, oh, that's clever. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a nice little game there. What a lovely little game. made it okay that was yelp so let's try we're working our way through here this is microbes then so this is one meg only this will work on the 500 plus um, but I don't think this is gonna work on the 500 we'll just see what happens <laughs> it's a lovely old game for this tab though to have everyone's address and the software developer's address. So if uh, if you share this, kids, send three pounds to that address. Is that three pound cash? Game designed by Vision Software. I think they might be growing as I'm shooting them. at the same time. Uh, I don't know, I've just done. Okay, you get the idea. That's quite a cool game. F5 Asteroids. Wow, this is a real... Press one or two player game. Right, so let's have a one player game. I remember this on my, uh, I think I got this on my Atari 600. Whoa! 2600. Oh, boom. Okay. This is until we uh, lose all my lives. Damn it. Alright, 
you get the idea. 500, same disc, let's go. Okay, so uh, you've seen all the other games. So let's just see if Microbes works. It's clicking away. Now bear in mind this is a 512K machine. It's all it's got in here is half a meg. And the disk drive stopped. Well, the disk drive started again. I think that's it. I think that's all it's going to do. So it's just going to be a black screen. nothing at all on that it just went completely blank yeah so I rebooted the machine it just took me back to this screen let's see what uh, fire and ice see if that loads okay even though it's just a demo I think that's my favorite demo off this disc actually so we'll just give that one go Now actually, looking at statistics between the 500 and the 500 plus, there were uh, 1,081,000 of the 500 plus sold in over the world, I think. And uh, out of the 500 plus sold, there are 79,500. So there was quite a big difference. Whether that's because people bought the 500 and then just didn't upgrade to the 500 plus, or whether then the 500 plus wasn't out that long, to be honest. So I think possibly people just went for the 600 or the 1200. Um, Let's see how this goes. A lot of the old sort of 500 games, you needed 16-bit slow memory anyway, and the, uh, the 500 Plus has, a, has got a maximum of uh, two megabytes of graphics memory, so it's chip memory. Okay, here we go. Let's give this another go. I mean, practically speaking, it's not, it's not much of a difference between the 500 Plus. Some weird looking thing in the tree. So there you have it. There's not a lot of differences really between the two, 500, 500 plus. The only th real difference I could see was the fact that it couldn't load that game. But I think that was just down to it being one meg only. Some of the later games that came out, I haven't tested obviously, but I think there was some, definitely some compatibility issues between the uh, Kickstart 1.3 ROM and games that were like, designed later on. Anyway, if you've enjoyed watching, please like and subscribe. See you soon.